All right, Steve Holland here with Rapid Tech. This is a uh, another course on the Thermal Pride Model OH6. And again, this is part of the Heat Exchanger Failures and Identification Series for those that are seeking their Rapid Tech Heat Exchanger certification. In this video, we're going to go over the welded heat exchanger. As you can see, this is the welded uh, style heat exchanger from Thermal Pride. And of course, it's on the OH6 model. The OH6 is a low-profile, high-boy furnace. This one uses the Beckett burner. One really cool thing about Thermal Pride, and I like Thermal Pride. I think they're a great company. Thermal Pride uh, will allow you to configure this furnace a couple of different ways. So you have a choice of a burner, a choice of a different type of blower system. It's a good furnace. I did find some problems, though, and I found an issue with this particular one. Now, this particular furnace is in our lab, and it's used... Um, it's used in our lab at our company, in our studio actually. Um, we'll get into that in a second. So here's the heat exchanger. What do you need to know about it? Not much. Here's what I'll tell you. Number one, it's heavy. It's well constructed. It uses a weld system. So they weld everything. All these pieces of metal. Welding is an art, by the way. Good welders uh, are hard to find in some cases. But look at all this. Okay. Comes out of Indiana, I believe. I could be wrong, so don't be shooting me a bunch of emails saying, Steve, it's it's in Michigan or Ohio. I think it's Indiana, actually, where they build this. But look at the welds, all right? So that's the Thermal Pride OH6 heat exchanger. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick video that I took, and uh, then we'll talk about exactly why this happened. And I do have a shout-out, by the way. Got a shout out to my oil buddy, Earl. Earl down in Florida. Used to be in Wisconsin. And uh, I bought his very first company. And uh, Earl was, uh, he was a trip. Earl was a trip. He's down in Florida now. I got to look him up sometime. I was just in Florida last week, by the way. Key West. Totally different environment than what I'm used to, but I liked it. It was awesome. All of me, I saw a bunch of HVAC guys there. Shouldn't be called HVAC, though. They should just be called VAC. All right, let's go ahead and watch this video. So here's the uh, the front view of that Thermal Pride, as you can see. This is in our studio, and this is a live-fired furnace that we use literally to heat our studio and our shop. We have multiple furnaces in our studio, and they're all live-fired. So uh, there's boilers, and there's oil furnaces, and there's gas-forced air, and... We've got air conditioning and split systems and mini splits and all the good stuff. So all that product is available. Now, here's a picture of the heat exchanger. It's upside down. Somebody might say, well, it's upside down. Of course it's upside down because I couldn't find the problem. A senior technician of mine had to show me the problem, and I'm going to show it to you. It was very, very difficult to find. 90% of the technicians in this country would have never, ever found this problem. I guarantee it. I guarantee 95 or 97, 99% of them wouldn't have found this problem. This is why good technicians developed through the Rapid Tech program, they can find this stuff because they're good at it. You gotta try to, I'm trying to, ah, right there. That's what I was trying to do, stop it. Check this out. That's a fracture where two pieces of metal were supposed to be welded together. Here's what I discovered. See this weld? See this weld? They missed this. So let's stop for a second. Does this mean that Thermal Pride is a bad company? No. Does this mean that the Thermal Pride employees are bad people? No. It A, it either means that they made a mistake... Everybody makes mistakes. I make dozens per day. I'm actually trying to get that down under into single digits now. It could be the process. It could have been training. Could have been a fire alarm that day. I don't know. But it's all right. Thermal Pride took care of us on this. They got us a new heat exchanger. No problem. Matter of fact, this furnace was installed in one of our customers' homes. And we changed the heat exchanger Um and kept it, and then we processed the warranty. Here's what happened, though. 
the, uh, the customer decided to upgrade to natural gas. And uh, that's one of the challenges with oil heat today. I'm a big fan of oil heat, by the way. I like oil heat. Um, does that mean I'm going to go out and promote it for the rest of my life? No, but I like it. It's reliable. It burns hot. It's, it gives you an HVAC, from an HVAC guy's perspective, your average dude or dudette, you know, running around in their station wagon or minivan claiming their HVAC techs, they're not out there working on oil furnaces. you got to know what you're doing to work on an oil furnace. So there's your fracture, all right, as a result of a poor weld. Now, Thermal Pride may not be too happy that I'm showing this, but it's okay. I like you people. You're good people who we'll still sell your products. But they made it right, and I'm sure they'll never sell a heat exchanger or have another manufacturing problem like this again because they they know what they're doing. Now, I want to show you something else that I discovered on this furnace. As soon as I zoom in here. Ah, right there. Check this out. Another tricky little problem to find. So either we have a lack of weld here or where they brought the two pieces of metal together, it started to open up. You know, you could see a weld splatter here. So I don't know what's going on there. But as you see here, you see here, I'm guessing this weld splatter is coming from this joint and then all the other joints. I mean, when you're welding... If you've ever been around welding, man, there's stuff flying everywhere. A little weld splatter is not a big deal, especially on a heat exchanger. This thing is not designed for its cosmetic purpose. Now, I want to touch on one thing with you guys. This heat exchanger is removed from the furnace, flipped upside down in a brightly lit area using a very sophisticated, customized inspection camera system that allows me to see in places that most eyes can't. That means that you're going to have to do a really good job as technicians out there because 98% of you will miss this. The reason this is a challenge is because those fractures were opening up and there was black soot that was starting to show on those openings. That means that if soot, even small amounts of flue gas properties are entering the space, you could, no guarantees, you could have the potential for low-level carbon monoxide to enter the space. That's why it's important for service techs to get the proper training and understand exactly what you're looking for. This particular furnace was a little trickier, and a senior tech at our company found this. I didn't find this. Got to give him credit, and I can't say his name because I didn't get permission to say his name. So there's a view of the heat exchanger upside down, and I'm now going to turn off my camera, so the camera wand might get a little crazy. There we go, and we're going to park right there. Why, I don't know. <laughs> it is what it is. So what happened with this furnace? Real simple. We had some poor welds or poor welds, or depending on where you're from, poor, some poor welds, all right? Then we had some setup issues. Now, I'm not talking about setup at the time of installation. Maybe we had some setup issues with regard to the jig they used. Maybe the welder had a problem. Maybe there was a, you know, a welder that was dysfunctional. You know what's cool about saying the word welder, dysfunctional? Two nouns in one. The welder could be the person doing the welding. Or the welder, the tool, may have had a problem. So either the welder that was doing the welding had a problem. Or the tool they were using had a problem. Or the setup had a problem. Either way, it doesn't matter. Here's what you need to know. Number one, if you come across any welded heat exchangers, gas or oil, check all your welds. Inspect them thoroughly. Do a good job because 98% of the service techs in the HVAC world would have missed this particular problem. Because at our company, we have highly skilled, highly trained, highly educated individuals out there doing their job each day, stuff like this doesn't get missed. So there you have it. And I will close with this. I'm Steve Holland with Rapid Tech. 
If you'd like to reach me, here's my email. It's really simple, ethoskill at gmail.com. Or you can pester my general manager named Scott. He loves that. 866-992-1717. Or you can visit our blog site at heatexchangersafety.com. Now, what's really cool about that, all the information that's there is free. I don't have much to sell you there. Matter of fact, I don't think there's really anything to sell there. But it's a great resource for those of you that would like to share information with your customers, maybe other coworkers. And if you're really brave, get a hold of me and sign up for Rapid Tech. Get that heat exchanger certification, and I promise you, you'll outwit, you'll outsmart, and you'll outwork all of your competitors. Thank you, and until the next video, have a great day.